So we've put the red light on and opened up the the hives just so we can get a better look at the actual workers. And I've, I've got my light from my phone on them at the moment and they're not flying too much because it's not ideal lighting for them. It's not like sunlight. But there's a couple... <laughs> The couple that are getting ambitious. This hive is probably about two months old now. They just start off with a queen and the queens come out in about February to March time and so the queen will forage and collect up enough stores to find and start a colony and then she'll go down into the ground burrow hole um, and she'll start to lay eggs. So it takes altogether about four to five weeks from egg to becoming an actual fully fledged adult bee. Once she's got sort of enough going, she'll just stay in the hive from then on, laying eggs um, and growing her colony bigger and bigger. And actually within three to four weeks, you could have a colony which is increased by tenfold. But yeah, we'll just have a wee look and see if we can find some younger bees. Um, because younger bees in the first 24 hours of being born, they're actually a sort of white gray color. They're not black and yellow. Um, so that'd be quite interesting to see if we can find. There might not be one in here. I can't really see one in there. There'll be one in one of them. Mm. Mm. They're like much more obvious usually. The one day I look for a young bee, I don't find one. I see them all the time. I don't, you obviously can't smell this over video. But bees have a specific smell when they're alarmed. It's, they're basically producing something called an alarm pheromone. Um, so they're all telling each other, be warned, there's something to be worried about. Some of it smells quite nice. Um, sometimes it kind of smells quite sweet. Sometimes it kind of smells quite tangy. Um, but there's one particular hive out of these four that kind of smells like bad feet. So unfortunately we couldn't actually find any newborn bees, which was quite unlucky seeing as I've got 16 hives. Um, but luckily I've taken photos before of the newborn bees. So this is what they look like in the first 24 hours of life. The white band here is going to become a yellow band like that one there. And even the black's a lot greyer. So it kind of, in a way, looks like an old, old bee. This is actually an egg pod. Um, so inside there will be a larva, so that little white maggot that is uh, spun silk around itself and it's now developing into a pupa and then it'll eventually also develop into an adult bee. Um, and so you can see all these empty egg pods here and what they actually use the pods for once a bee is hatched out of it is to store food in. So when, when a bee goes out and forages and collects nectar, it will give the nectar to the other bees, like I said last week, through trophallaxis, that bee snogging. But it will also store the nectar in these, in these wells here, as well as giving it to their sisters. So you can actually see the wells filled with nectar, like the nectar shining from inside them. This particular species can get up to about 350 workers, which is actually quite big for a, for a bumblebee colony. Um, in honeybee colonies, they have thousands and thousands of workers. But you can actually see from all the different kind of workers inside the hive that there's loads of different sizes. So you get sort of a, a varying size of workers. Now that's nothing to do with age. So they don't like sort of get bigger as they get older. It's to do with where they're placed in the colony when they're developing and also how much food they're given as they're developing. So bees on like eggs that are sort of stored on the inside of the colony. They'll be warmer and so they'll hatch earlier and be larger workers. And the bees on the periphery, on the outside, will end up being smaller bees as well and they'll hatch later on. There is also some dependence on how much they're fed by workers and the queen when they're developing on how big they get. The foraging bees actually only live for two to four weeks they have a much shorter life expectancy. Um, that's partially to do with the fact that they're, um, I guess, maybe using more energy. But it's also because there's a lot more dangers on the outside. Another thing with foraging bees is sometimes they get lost. So they might, like, some particularly uh, less able bees <laughs> might not be able to find their way home. Um, and this is actually relatively common. 
some other scientists who are studying bumblebees and how pesticides like neonicotinoids are affecting them have found that these specific pesticides affect their learning ability and their memory. So a lot of bees are actually forgetting uh, how to get home, essentially, which is sort of one of the more worrying sides of these particular pesticides is that it's not just necessarily killing them straight out, it's affecting their behaviour, their learning, their memory. So there's a lot of sort of dangers on the outside of hives, which is why foraging bees kind of have the unlucky job of dying a lot earlier than their indoor sisters. So the way that the queen will make other queens once the colony is large enough is through the suppression of a pheromone. A pheromone is a really important substance that social insects produce to communicate with one another. Um, in this case, uh, when the queen has laid eggs, she'll produce this pheromone that basically stops any workers from becoming queens. As long as this pheromone is produced in the first two to five days of development, the developing larva will become a worker. So when she wants to make a queen, she just doesn't make this pheromone or doesn't um, produce this pheromone around that larva or around that egg. We were looking for a queen earlier. You can actually see through that hole there, big fat queen. <laughs> and you can see all her workers around her. They'll be making sure that she's fed and that all the eggs she's laying are being looked after. Oh, she's about to come out now. So you can see she's having a wander about now. And actually, if the hive is being attacked, then she will start to get more aggressive again. She will start to roam around and buzz with quite high pitched buzz. So that whole big sort of waxy housing um, was actually made by the bees and they used, they made it from pollen and also from their saliva. And underneath that big waxy covering, there'll be all the egg pods and also the nectar wells. Um, now not all the hives have done this. Maybe they were getting more light in and because bumblebee hives are traditionally underground, um, the light's sort of maybe a disturbance. And so they might have made that so that all the developing workers were sheltered from the light. Um, but I thought it was I thought it was pretty amazing when I first saw it because it's like they've made this this whole building for themselves. Bumblebees have traditionally been thought of as more disorganized compared to honeybees, but here's quite a good example of where they're maybe actually more organized than we previously thought. So although they haven't gotten rid of their waste outside of the colony like uh, I believe honeybees do. They've actually just put it all in one corner there. So that is bee poop and there's also some dead larvae in there. So there's actually larvae that have died for whatever reason and they've removed them and they've put them all in one place which is pretty amazing organisations. So they've separated them from the, from the rest of the healthy colony.